Hi, everybody, and welcome to Animation. I'm Merv, and this is my buddy Blake. Hello. And today's episode will be about Star Wars Visions, Disney's attempt at some Star Wars anime. That's all. <laughs> nice. Give me what I'm looking for. This is animation. Are you ready? We're going to talk about each one individually. So, there you go. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is the first episode, The Duel. And then at the end, we'll do a wrap up, kind of an overall look at the entire series and what we thought. And whether or not we would call it anime. Ooh, is it Ooh. anime or is it something else? Right. I think technically it's they're all Japanese creators. So is it anime maybe or yeah. anime maybe not? Mm. Is it an anime can't or an anime can? <laughs> um, but if you go by the strict definition of Japanese animation, then yes. But if you go by the more, you know, do, how does it feel? Does it feel anime? I think some could definitely be a maybe, right? Right. But yeah, like you said, we're going to do a little bit differently today. Uh, we will, I will be going over what episodes are about and you will be going over writer's perspective. And then we're actually going to do the rating after the what it's about. So a little bit of, of a different order to try and make it a little bit more efficient because there is nine episodes to get through. And so. they are very different. It's not like a series of episodes where we can say like in these four episodes, this is what happened. It's an yeah. anthology. So each episode is completely separate from the others. And I think it would be easy to say or fair to say that they vary widely in what we are going to rate them in quality yes and as a reminder our rating is based off of would we recommend this to our friends family and anyone who happens to watch this including subscriber bob on a scale of one to five yeah on a scale one yes. to five one being no we'll never talk about it again and mm -hmm. probably forget it after we get done talking about it to five Prefer meaning to. yeah we're gonna run around and tell people tomorrow to watch it so we'll tweet it out with the tweets, with the tweeters. <laughs> nice. So episode one is called The Duel. And the animation style of this one is like a grainy pencil drawn black and white style for the most part. There are touches of color here and there, like buttons on droids, door switches, lightsabers, that type of thing have color. And the setting is a traditional Japanese style village with like futuristic bolt-ons like futuristic roof futuristic door traditional walls you know that type of thing so it's like a little bit of a mishmash the um story itself goes like this a mysterious man in samurai garb is working with a merchant as an armored vehicle rolls into the village the vehicle stops and a group wearing random pieces of stormtrooper armor here and there file out firing blasters into the air. The merchant tells the samurai that these are bandits, remnants of a war willing to take whatever they want. The bandit leader says, give us your goods. It's time to pay your taxes. So we've got a, a basic shakedown going on here. A young boy stands up as the chief stating, you have taken enough. And as the bandits laugh, we see the boy's father laying in a bed, presumably ill or something worse. The village guards attack. And just when they have the bandits handled, a Sith woman with an evil grin mask enters the fray. The samurai's droid, the mysterious stranger's droid, is blasted in the crossfire. The mysterious samurai requests that the merchant have his droid repaired by the time a pot he sits down reaches a boil. And then he enters the fight to take on the Sith woman with the evil grin. Uh, we expect he's a Jedi when he uses the force, but when the samurai draws 
his lightsaber, we see that it's red and get very confused. He even says, unfortunately, I am not a Jedi. The duel ensues between the Sith woman with the evil grin mask and the mysterious samurai who is not a Jedi. And it's a pretty cool fight. And at the end of it, the samurai is victorious. He fools the Sith woman into attacking a decoy and then stabs her in the back, which is not the Jedi way. The samurai takes the kyber crystal from the Sith woman's lightsaber and he opens up his jacket to put it in there and it shows that he has a lot of red kyber crystals. But then he thinks twice about it and gives it to the young village chief for protection. And the episode ends. And that is mm -hmm, the story mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. the duel. So um, I would give this one... And I went Are back and Jen Ken Pon. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think we're just gonna give it and then we'll John Ken Pon at the end, right? We'll For go through everything. the whole okay. yeah, I think here we'll just more casually say. So um I'll I guess I'll go first on this one and then sure. you go first on the next one. Okay. So uh, looking at this series and would I recommend someone take the I think this one's like 19 minutes. Would I recommend someone take the mm -hmm. 19 minutes to watch this one? I would say yes. I actually gave this one a five. I also gave this one a five. Right. This was effing great. Yeah, yeah, this was a good one. Mm -hmm. So well worth the time. I think this the story was contained enough, and I'm, I'm sure that's something that'll come up mm -hmm. a lot, like how well did they do mm -hmm. with the short story mm -hmm. and the time that they had? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, Murph, from a, a writer's perspective, why don't you tell us a little bit about your thoughts regarding the well, duel? Well, if you're interested in short form fiction, Stay tuned or listen to the last one where I talk about the whole the series as a whole, and I will get into how to handle short form fiction. Some of these do it very well. Some of these do it very poorly. But this one in particular, I want to talk about subtext, which is when you show something and the meaning is kind of underlying. It is not the thing that is on the surface. Uh, a lot of people say, like, it's an iceberg, and you only see the tip of it, but everything else, when two people are talking or a story happens, is below the surface, and that's where you want to live. There's a scene in this where there there's two scenes where there is very nice subtext that I that I took one way, and, and there are multiple ways to take it, which is a thing with subtext. Um, it flips itself around, it flips the stories around, makes you kind of look at it in a different way. An example of subtext is the shortest short speaking of short form the shortest story ever written is a sort story by Ernest Hemingway and it's called For Sale. The title is For Sale and the whole story is Baby Shoes Never Used. And so everything you pull out of that story you're putting into it, right? There it doesn't tell you anything up front. It doesn't tell you anything on the surface. You have to read into the why that story is so sad. But two times, and you mentioned you mentioned both of them. The first time is when he pulls out his lightsaber and it's red. And we think, oh, this Ronin is actually a Sith. Later on, but he never says I'm a Sith. Nope. So we are, the subtext of the red lightsaber is Sith. But then later on, he opens his coat and we see that he is a Sith killer and he has a bunch of red crystals, which means he is not necessarily a Sith. He is not a Jedi, as he said. He might have been a Jedi. He might have been a Sith. We don't know. But he never says, like, a worse version of this story is him opening his coat and going, want to buy a crystal? No. <laughs> opening his coat and saying, I am the Ronin Sith killer, and I have killed this many Sith. And you can see that I hunt them down, and I try, and I take their crystals. as That would be text. But the subtext, he opens it, we see he hunts Sith and takes our kyber crystals. He doesn't have to say anything. We get it. That use of subtext is very, very smartly done in this episode. Yeah, that was the questions it raises without being frustrating. Right. Because I think that's a tough line, a tough balance to keep is, I love having questions and being like, ooh, what does this mean? What does that mean? 
but I also don't want it to the point where I'm frustrated that it's not giving me enough. And I felt like this balanced that real well. Very simple story, very straightforward. And I would say the story wasn't even the best part because the animation was so cool. The music throughout, I think, and most of these were was very good, but the music in this one was, there were two of them I thought that had excellent music, and this was one of them. I would mostly, so getting into the things that we didn't like, I really only have one thing. I really enjoy the black and white with splashes of color. I am lucky enough to have a very large, pretty, not very large, a pretty large TV. I have a 65 inch TV mm -hmm. in your mansion. Yeah. In my mansion. And, uh, <laughs> I still, I wish I love the pencil. I wish it was a little clearer at points. And there were parts where it was, it was kind of muddled looking. There's a part of this that I like that I'll include in, in my favorite things, but I there, the only diss I had is there were parts of the pencil drawn animation where it just kind of looked like a blob of pencil strokes to me. That mm -hmm. is literally the only diss I have. What about you? I, I have none. I yeah. really like this. <laughs> like beginning then, I really love the style because it was, it's interesting and it, and it allows, it's not super clean and it's not trying to be realistic. And this is one of those things where it's very, not very many mediums not very many media can have that style mediums couldn't do it either they could not um i'm sensing <laughs> a pencil drawing I'm sensing of a ghost. us going into our favorite things about this coming up in three two one what are some of your favorite things about this one well the stuff i already said obviously the subtext it handled short form very well stay tuned to the end if you want to know more about that um i said the music and the art style already i really liked but the other thing is the a action i thought was really fun to watch it was uh, well choreographed so i'm going to start with the other end of my disc so the the pencil sketching was a little mixed for me however although there were moments that were muddled to me there's also parts where it looked real, like especially I noticed this with the merchant that he was talking to. Uh, did you ever see the the Lord of the Rings from the 70s, the cartoon one? Yeah, yeah. Leonard Nimoy, yeah. His own people began to despise the wretched creature, to call him Gollum. <laughs> How it was like drawn over real people acting. And so that creates this kind of fluid movement that, is tough to do in just regular animation without doing it the way that way. And actually there's two episodes in this series that do this where there's moments where I'm like, that totally looks like it was drawn over a real person. They use mocap a lot now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that was the case for this or not, but especially at the beginning with that merchant, there were some parts where it just, it looked like a real, I don't know what that alien is called, but it looked like a real, whatever that was drawn over with pencil they did an excellent job in parts um i'll throw out one other one that i've got i like the mix of the japanese style with star wars i thought they did a really good job with that i thought that was super cool this was one of the better ones i feel like that did that yes yes some of them went too far one way or the other for me yeah some felt like an anime uh, we'll get into it but some felt like an anime that was has a Star Wars sticker on top of it, right? Yeah. I have like the lightsaber Japanese fan that the Sith has. That was sweet. Yeah. It's like literally a like a paper fan with lightsabers all the way around it. A parasol, right? Yeah. And it's like blah, 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 blah. that was very creative. And the R2 unit with the grass hat was super yeah, cool too. That was sweet. So I thought those were a couple of good examples of kind of the Eastern style, the Japanese style mixed with Star Wars lore another like i have um is the ticking time bomb this is a good way to raise tension alfred hitchcock gave an example of two people talking and they're at a table just talking and it's kind of a tense scene um because they're having a negotiation but the minute he cuts to a time bomb under the table and it's ticking down suddenly the negotiation becomes more tense because if they get it done in time they don't blow up 
a lot of good stories have some sort of time bomb in it, some sort of time element. We need to get here by this time or this happens. And they and he did that at kind of a reverse time bomb with the tea kettle. Like as soon as this tea kettle, and so we're watching and we're like, what's going to happen when the tea kettle goes off? <laughs> I also have that on my list, but it's less eloquently put. I have the reason the pot needed to be boiled is my note about <laughs> that. So, um, I, ha I also have the fight is very cool. Obviously it needs to be, it's called the duel. However, there tends to be a couple of different feelings regarding the force and star Wars. There's the folks who tend to like the force more unleashed. And there are the folks who tend to like the force more reserved, like me being able to just get the lightsaber to my hand is a really big deal versus, you know, me stopping a blaster bolt and shooting it back at like, I prefer the force unleashed. And I felt that in this, the force was, was pretty unleashed. And my last one is that the village guard, and I don't know if this means anything or what, but. The village guard is made up of traditionally evil Star Wars characters. There's even a sand person and an empire droid that are part of like the guard guarding this village, technically on like the good side of this. That stood out to me a lot. And I thought that was very cool that it wasn't, you know, a bunch of R2 units and I don't know, whatever the good Ewoks. Alien. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I wasn't I a bunch of Ewoks. There was at least one Ewok. I'm a big Ewok fan, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yeah, I, I think anyone who says that they're not is a liar or they're lying to themselves. Right. But yeah, all bad characters, like the the dinosaur looking face one, and like I said, the Imperial droid and sand people, like straight up, <laughs> but the good guys. So I thought that was pretty sweet. I have one more. This also did a good job with represent using representations so the chief represented the whole village so we didn't have to keep cutting from one village person to another village person we have the chief right there the and then they used an un unmasked stormtrooper to kind of represent the whole uh, guard the whole bad guy guard so we didn't have to like see 700 stormtroopers which we did but there was also the one that talked and if he's defeated we know they're all defeated yeah there's a lot in this and because you can and because you don't have to do work you can sit there and you can enjoy the action you can look for those littler details you can see those kind of nods to the other star wars films and and shows it's it's well done and think about what the answers to the questions are like who is the guy what yeah yeah Let's, uh, I'm glad we both like that one. Let's move on to a different one. Um, let's move on to episode two, Tatooine Rhapsody. 